All right, so good morning, everybody, and welcome to our English class. But first, I just want to make sure if my presentation is visible at your end. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma good morning, Po. And yes, also, good morning. And also, I am I loud and clear? Yes, ma'am. That's good to know. All right, so today is Monday, and I want your first day of the week to be filled with knowledge. But before we proceed to our discussion, may I request to turn on your, turn on your cameras for our short prayer. But if you can't, it's okay, huh? And may I call on Ms. It's okay, Monica. May I call on Ms. Ter... Mark James De Jesus to lead us on our prayer. Good morning. Uh, please bow down your heads and feel the presence of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sins against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Um, De Jesus, for leading us. All right. It's nice to see you. It's not, it's not noticeable, but I really love to see you again here in my class. So, how is everybody? May I hear from Ms. Monica Matito? Yes, ma'am, I'm doing fantastic. Although there are a lot of deadlines approaching, still, we can manage this one. Just be positive. So I'm doing fantastic, ma'am. That's good to hear from you, Miss Matito. How about you, Miss Palpalatok? Hello, ma'am. I am doing good. I'm also kind of busy these days because of midterm projects. Yes, fighting, Miss Palpalato. How about you, Miss Kesha? Hello, ma'am. I'm also doing good. A little bit stressed because of different examinations, but um, I can manage. All right. How about you, Miss Kalila? I'm doing great, ma'am. Kind of busy, but still trying hard. <laughs> Fighting. How about you, Mr. James? Uh, fine, ma'am. Uh, quite stressed these days, but still uh, doing fine. All right. Ms. Uh, Esther, are you there? How about how about you? How are yes, you? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. I'm feel good. All right. Good morning, Ms. Corpus. <laughs> How are you? Good morning, mom. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Uh, just a bit stressed, but uh, I think I can do all the requirements in one minute. No, just kidding. <laughs> this week, I, I'm, <laughs> I, uh, I think I should, I hope I would be able to finish all these requirements. Oh, I guess you are one of the procrastinators there. <laughs> That's All right. a fact. <laughs> I do feel the same. No, it is relatable. But take this as a piece of advice. Every time that you feel tired, stressed, or feeling unmotivated, just contradict your thought. Turn that negative into positive. It means that you uh, take that negative into a more positive and productive way. For example, you, you don't want to do these unending activities because you lack sleep and uh, uh, you're stressed and so on and so forth. Then, make it positive. Think of those children who don't have the opportunity to go to school or to study. While you are here, almost there, close to your dream, and you plan to back out, <laughs> Be reminded that our thoughts are the real enemies. Did you get my point, people? Yes, ma'am. I agree. Awesome. 
So just a short reminder, please always mute your microphone, open your cameras if possible, especially when you are answering so that I can recognize you and your classmate can see you as well. And also, you can tap the raise hand button if you want to answer and please maximize our Google Meet chat box if your microphone malfunctions. Do I make myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, I have checked your attendance earlier while we are praying and I noted that two of you are not in my class, but it, but that's okay. So before we move on to our next topic, let us have a short recap of our previous lesson. So anyone who would like to recall our last topic? Any volunteers? Yes, Ms. Palpalato. Um. Ma'am, we discussed narrative essays and some appropriate narrative structures to follow. Very good. So who can tell me what a narrative essay is? Yes, Miss Matito. Yes, ma'am. Um, as far as I can remember, ma'am, narrative essays test our ability to express our experiences in a creative and compelling way and to follow an appropriate narrative structure for Yes, we have some narrative structures to follow. And what is it? Can you enum enumerate them? Any volunteers? Yes, Miss Kesha. All right, ma'am. Those are orientation, complication, series of events, resolution, and coda. Nice one. It seems that you already understood our previous topic. Are there any questions, clarification, and violent reactions there? No, ma'am. All right. So for today's class, we will talk about composing an argumentative essay. And as the lesson progresses, you are expected to... All right. You are expected to explain argumentative essay, outline the parts of an argumentative essay, and also create an argumentative essay about current events. So are you familiar with argumentative essays? Have you encountered it before? What do you know about it? Can I hear from you? Yes, Ms. Matita? Yes, ma'am. I'm somehow familiar with it, but I cannot remember the details now. All right. How about the others? Are you familiar with it? <laughs> All right. Let's see if you are if you're really familiar with uh, our topic for today. Let us have an initial analysis to test your stock knowledge. But don't worry, the score will not be recorded since it was only a pretest. So I will be sending you the link to our quizzes in our chat here. All right. Were you able to access it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, let's, let's wait for the others. So I have here Momo. <laughs> I think it's Monica. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's my nickname. For. All right. So how about the others? Where are you? I will wait for you. <laughs> oh, here. I saw Russell and Esther. And Keisha, so I have here James also and Bernadette, I think. <laughs> it's Bernie. Bernie. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, ma'am. You have 20 seconds to answer each number, okay? So let's start.
This is the first paragraph of the essay that you outline your topic. It is where you provide background information necessary to understand your claim. Alright, somebody's still answering. Alright, time is up. So, our top one is Russell. Next is Rina. Okay, let's have the second one. This is part of your first paragraph. It is concise, one sentence summary of your main point and claim. Alright, let's wait for the others. All right, time is up. Our top one is Russell again. All right, next question. It explains the reason why you support your thesis. This is where you back up your claims that, with example, research statistics studies and text citation. All right. All done. Let's look at our leaderboard. Oh, we have a new top one. It is Rina. All right. This part restates your thesis and summarizes of all the claims made in your body paragraph. All right, let's wait for the others. All right, time is up. So, let's look at our leaderboard. Still, oh, it's Russell again. <laughs> That's so cute. Next question. It is the first part in developing argumentative essays that states your opinions, views, and purpose. What is the answer? Let's wait for the others who are still answering. All right, time is up. Let's see who is the new top one. Whoa, is Grina, Kesha, and Momo. We have new top three. It is important to know the readers of your essay, either a definable group, disinterested observers, opponents of your points of view, or etc. We have a key uh, keyword there. Time is up. Let's see our leaderboard. All right, it's Rina, Kesha, and Momo. Russell and Rina are alternate in the top one. It is an important part of developing argumentative essays. That is the case with any piece of writing, you should take your essay through multiple drafts. Let's see. All done. All right. Let's look at our leaderboard. Wow, we have a new top one. It's Kesha. We have uh, three questions to go. It is the last stage of developing argumentative essays where after you have written a developed talk, draft, take off your writer's hat and put on your reader's hat. What is the answer? All right. 
there's all right all done what about now who is the top one oh it's still kesha two questions to go it is the main purpose of an argumentative essay I, I said it a while ago about that. All done. Our top one is Rina. Next is Momo and next is Russell. And for the last number, we have it is a piece of writing that take a stance on an issue. All right. For our finalists, we have Rina, Momo, Razel, next is Kesha. All right. So thank you for participating to our um, pre-test. So let's start sharing a screen there, our presentation. Most of you got high scores, very good class. So now, Tell me if you can visibly saw my presentation, okay? It is visible, ma'am. All right. So I'm glad that you have prior knowledge of our topic for today because our everyday dialogues are often required to be presented to others in the context of um, the community. Most especially in the present times, we always hear views and opinions from different individuals regarding a certain issue. Especially right now, we have social media where we can post, share, or comment on our thoughts and opinions regarding a certain issue. It is very relevant to talk about presidential bets, right? Isn't yes, it? Ma yes, ma'am. But don't worry, I will not ask you to or require you to state your presidential bets. <laughs> Actually, there are so many posts especially on Facebook about their stance, trying to persuade readers to support their point of view about their own bets. But the main problem is some of them didn't provide threads of evidence to back it up. And so I want you to read this excerpt taken from an article entitled, The Government Can Do Something. All right. I will give you three minutes to read this article, so you may start now and afterward I will ask you some questions, okay? Are we clear with that? Copy yes, ma'am. Yes, ma you can type in done to our chat here if you finish reading, okay? So we start reading at 10.40 a.m. and we will end at 10.43. Take your time, people.
Russell and Renalyn are done. Let's wait for the others. All right, time is up. May I request Ms. Rina Lynn Corpus to read the article on the screen, please? Okay, ma'am. In solution to alleviate the less fortunate people in our country, the government should give priority to education for it will be one of the best way to give solution to poverty. And a known author once said, education is a gateway to eradicating poverty. The youth is seldom recognized as a resource in decision-making processes. It, in its place, youth are systematically excluded from important arenas of decision-making and development processes. As a result, their perspectives are often absent in policy-making. Youths will not suffer the same fate as their parents has experienced, for education will ensure that they will be able to build a life that is free from poverty. Their communities will benefit as well as uh, their communities will benefit as well as children share their newfound knowledge. Education is a key in lifting people out of the cycle of extreme poverty and preventing one poor generation producing another poor generation. Poverty, therefore, is inevitable but can be controlled by the government at least lessen the growing number of the less fortunate community it affects the poor for they have little resources this means that poverty is an issue that's harming poor people that want to get out of poverty but they can't because they don't always get to have the support of the government even though there are a lot of people trying to stop poverty it is impossible to stop it without the support and power of the government this is because the fight i mean to fight poverty we have to fight it with a lot of money from the government that that um sorry i can't read it uh that could support with this need okay. all right miss thank you miss corpus so based on the article that you read what do you think is the main argument of the writer? Anyone? Yes, Miss Matita. Um, can I try? Yes, of course. Um, I think one of the main argument is the first statement in this in this uh, essay. In solution to alleviate the less fortunate people in our country, the government should give priority to education, for it will be one of the best ways to give solution to poverty. Yes, that is, that, that is correct, Ms. Matito. Thank you so much. The author claims that education is a gateway to eradicating poverty. And so, the government should give priority to education. Now, my question is, do you support the argument of, this, of the writer? Why or why not? Yes, Ms. Corpus. Um, I support the writer's claim because an educated person has more skills and knowledge which together increase productivity. Besides, educated people are also more resilient to change, whether it be economic, environmental, and personnel. That's a good point, Ms. Carpuz. Anyone who would like to add to Ms. Carpuz's claims? Yes, Ms., uh, Mr. De Jesus. In addition, ma'am, to Rina's answer, uh, individuals with more education will look for ways to diversify their sources of income. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. De Jesus. Before I share my thoughts, anyone here who disagrees with the claims of the two? All right. <laughs> Ms. Uh, Bernadette Kalila. 
Ma'am, um, I disagree because there are many factors in society, the government, the economy, and culture that contribute to systematic poverty across the world. You can educate anyone, but if you do not teach them how to apply the information that they have learned from their formal education to the decisions and actions that they will that require them to make to be adults, education is a car without fuel or a driver. That's a good observation, Miss Kalilap. Thank you so much for those who answered. Very good class. I also agree with the, your claims that education alone is not the key. We should apply what we've learned in school to alleviate poverty. But also, we can't deny the fact that individuals with a college degree have um, fared far better than those who either left school before graduation or earned only a um, high school diploma. Are we clear with that? Did you get my point, uh, people? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. So far, I am I am impressed with the way you state your stance on your claims. Good job, class. So, will you please raise your virtual hand if you are ready to, uh, to our discussion for our main topic for today? All right. Thank you so much for that. So, apparently, our topic for today is composing an argument argumentative essay. But let us first define what an argumentative essay is. All right. Will you please read what is presented on the screen? Uh, Ms. Kesha. All right, ma'am. What is an argumentative essay? An argumentative essay is a piece of writing that takes a stance on an issue. In a good argumentative essay, a writer attempts to persuade readers to understand and support their point of view about a topic by stating their reasoning and providing evidence to back it up. Generally, argumentative essay topics are related to science, technology, politics, and healthcare. All right. Thank you, Ms. Kesha. An argumentative essay is a piece of writing that takes a stance a stance on an issue. It means that you are typically asked to take a position on an issue or topic. So in a good argumentative essay, a writer attempts to persuade readers to understand and support their point of view about a topic. So in writing an argumentative essay, you are, um, you are not only informing your readers you are about to persuade them. But how would you able to exhort your readers? Anyone who can answer my question? Yes, Miss Matito. I think, ma'am, one of the ways is to explain and support my position with researches from reliable and credible sources, ma'am, to make them believe in my own point. Yes, that's correct. By stating their reasoning and providing evidence to back it up. So generally, argumentative essay topics are related to science, technology, politics, and healthcare. So argumentative essays should have straightforward structures so they are easy to uh, read for readers to follow. So the goal of an argumentative essay is to clearly outline a point of view reasoning and evidence. So the question is, how to outline an argumentative essay? So number one, we have introductory paragraph. The first paragraph of your essay should outline the topic, provide background information necessary to understand your argument, outline the evidence you will present and state your thesis. So what is the thesis statement? This is a part of your first paragraph. It is concise, one sentence summary of your main point and claim. So I will give you a guide in writing a thesis statement. So letter A, turn the topic into a question and answer it. So to do this, you have to set up a big question in the title of your essay or within the first few sentences. Then build up, the, build up to answering those questions in your thesis statement. 
So for example, in your title or introduction, you could post the question, what is the best type of shomai? Oh my God, that is my favorite. And then answer with your thesis statement, the best type of shomai is pork and shrimp shomai. So this method is effective because intriguing questions draw readers in and encourage them to keep reading to find the answer. So how about you? What is the best shomai for you? You can share your thoughts here on our chat box. Here on our chat box. All right, I will wait, I will wait for your answers. What is the best shomai for you? Are you typing in your answers? All right. Am I here? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Miss De Guzman? Yes, ma'am. My favorite show, my East. <laughs> what? What, Miss De Guzman? <laughs> ma'am, pork and shrimp show, my. Ma'am, I'm so sorry. My internet is lagging. Uh, I'm it's so slow. My favorite shawmai is spicy pork shawmai with samalamig. <laughs> with drinks. <laughs> How about you, uh, Miss Matito? Yes, ma'am. For me, the best type of shawmai is beef shawmai. Pork shawmai is not that good, Christine. Oh, beef shawmai. I also love this. That type uh, of shawmai. Ma'am, ma pork and shrimp shawmai is the best. Beef shawma oh. is <laughs> uh, Oh my god. Miss Rina Lin, you are a kind of choker. <laughs> yes, Miss De Guzman. Um, I'm not agree to what Monica said because we all have our as a stance, right? We all have our opinion based on what best type of shawma is really good for us. So that Monica, you do not need to say that it is not good because you need to, you just need to respect what is best for me. Okay. All right, that's uh good. Also, that's a good point, Mister Guzman. So, I'm craving now because of your favorite shawmais. So, but also you can state an argument, and then refute it. That is our letter B. So first, you have to introduce an idea that contrasts with your belief and immediately explain why you disagree with it. For example, while some of you believe that pork shomai is simple, they were shomai that you can turn into fantastic food, that you can uh, serve into expensive restaurants. So. This method it is effective because it gives readers a clear idea of everything you'll discuss in your essay. It also serves as a roadmap to help keep you organized and on track. Again, what are the, what are the three steps of writing a thesis statement? Anyone who can recall? Hello? Are you with me? Miss Matito, yes. Yes, ma'am. The, the, I'm sorry, ma'am. What's the question again? I'm sorry, ma'am. What is the three steps of writing the, the thesis statement? Oh, yes, ma'am. First one is to turn the topic into a question and answer it. Next one, ma'am, is state an argument and then refute it. And lastly, briefly outline your main point. Very good, Miss. Ms. Matito, thank you so much for that. So we are done with the introductory paragraph and the thesis statement and how to write it. Now let's move on with the third part on how to outline an argument 
quantitative essay. But before I continue, please raise your virtual hand if we are clear with the first two. All right. Thank you so much for that. All right. Body paragraph. A typical argumentative essay comprises three or more paragraphs that explain the reasons why you support your thesis. Each body paragraph should cover a different idea or piece of evidence and contain a topic sentence that clearly and concisely explains why the reader should agree with your position. So body paragraphs are where you back up your claims with examples, research, um, statistics, studies, and text citations. So address opposing points of view and disapprove them or explain why you disagree with them. Presenting facts and considering a topic from every angle adds so credibility and will help you gain a reader's trust. Just like what I've said earlier, the presidential bets in order for you to uh, persuade your readers to convince to convince your readers, you must back up your claims. And last number, number four, conclusion. So one paragraph that restates your thesis and summarizes all of the arguments made in your body paragraphs. So a good conclusion will um, will. So a good conclusion will appeal to a reader's emotion, and in some cases, uh, writers will use personal anecdote explaining how the topic personally affects them. So all right, we are done with how to outline an argumentative essay. So are we clear with that? Raise your hand if we are clear with that. All right, thank you for your hands. Let's see. Um, we will play a game to test if you understood what we have discussed. So I will send the link of our game using Kahoot. All right. Uh, here you go. Raise your hand if you were able to access it. It needs a pin, ma'am. All right. I will give you the pin. Just wait for a moment. Mm -mm. All right, here is the pin. Eight nine three. I will cut it also. Eight, two, three, three. <laughs> Who is creative, Iguana? Your nickname is kind of funny. Okay, I have here four people. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six people are here. We are waiting for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ma'am, I cannot eight. access the 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 link. The Kahoot said. We cannot recognize the pin code. Oh, 893-8233. 893-8233. Yes, ma'am. We didn't recognize that game pin. Please check and try again. Maybe because of my internet? Yeah, maybe because of your internet. If you can't uh, join our game, you can uh, just... Uh, Watch us in our, in my shared it, screen. It's good now, now ma'am. Thank you. All right, but I have here six people still. 
All right. Are you ready to start? All right. We have Wise Gazel. You are seven now. All right. Let's start this activity. One and go. So through or false. The introductory statement is part of your first paragraph. It is a concise summary of your main point and claim. True or false? You have 20 seconds to answer. Take your time. All right, all is done. We have here two people answered true and five people answered false. But our main but our correct answer is true. All right. So next question. Oh, our the top one is wise Gazel. I don't know who is that. And the second one is mighty rooster. For the others, you can catch up. Body paragraphs are where you back up your claims with examples, research statistics, studies, and text citations. It is true. Is it true or false? 20 seconds to answer. Take your time. All right. All of you got the correct answer. It is true. Let's see our leaderboard. Yes, we have wise case all again for the top one. Next question, true or false? Conclusion restate your thesis and summarizes all of the arguments made in your body paragraphs. Is it true or false? 20 seconds to answer. All right. We have one people who got the correct answer. And it is... Mighty rooster. All right. Next question. True or false? Facts, statistic, authorities, and anecdotes are some of evidences provided by the St. Martin's Guide to Writing. True or false? 20 seconds to answer. Who is Mighty Rooster according to Christine Joyce Dickisman? All right. Very good, class. You, you all got the correct answer. All right. Next question. Counter arguments include scenarios, cases, and textual evidences to an argument. True or false? 20 seconds to answer. False. All right. Let's look at our leaderboards. We have the top. Three here. Oh, our top one is Mighty Rooster. Congratulations. All right, let me share my screen to you. You really did understand our topic for today. So I will give you some suggestions for develop, developing argumentative essays. So number one, we have, next slide. All right, we have select an arguable topic, preferably one which interests, puzzles, or appeals you. So make sure your topic is neither too broad something which warrants or what which warrants a purpose or what is your purpose, what opinion, view, or idea do you want to prove? Try to articulate your purpose clearly before you begin writing. If you cannot state your purpose clearly, try to free write about your topic. 
And number two, take a position on your topic and form a thesis statement. Your thesis must be arguable. It must assert or deny something about your topic. To be arguable, a thesis must be have some probability of being true. And next one, consider your audience. So plan your paper with a specific audience in mind. Who are your readers? Are they a definable group, disinterested observers, opponents of your point of view, etc.? If you are not certain of your audience, direct your argument to um, a general audience. So next one, we have here, pres present clear and convincing evidence. So strong essays consist of reasons supported by evidence. Reasons can be thought of as the main points and supporting your claim of thesis. Often they are the answers to the questions. Why do you make the claim? So the St. Martin's Guide to Writing lists the following forms of evidences. We have facts, statistics, authorities, anecdotes, scenarios, cases, and textual evidences. I will post this um, list to your Google Classroom later so you can uh, check out. So in addition to using evidence, thoughtful writers anticipate their readers, counter arguments, Include objections, alternative challenges, or questions to your arguments. Imagine readers responding your argument as it unfolds. How might they react? A savvy writer will anticipate and address counter-arguments. A writer can address counter-arguments by acknowledging, accommodating, and or refuting them. So number five, we have... Draft your essay. As is the case with any piece of writing, you should take your argumentative essay through multiple drafts. And last but not the least, we have edit your draft. After you have written a developed draft, take off your writer's hat and put on your reader's hat. So evaluate your essay carefully and critically. Exchange a draft of your essay with classmates to get their feedback, for example, or your friends. Carefully revise your draft based on your assessment of it and suggestions from your peers. All right, we're done. Will you please identify six suggestions in developing an argumentative essay? Any volunteers? Yes, Ms. Matito. Yes, ma'am. These are selected an arguable topic, taking a position on the topic and forming a statement, considering your audience, presenting clear and convincing evidence, drafting your essay, and lastly, editing your draft. Awesome. So this time, you will answer a short quiz that says, if you really learn for our today's discussion. But don't worry, it is a short quiz. The first part is fact or bluff, and the second part is multiple choice. All right, so I will send the link here on our chat. Take your time in answering this quiz, okay? You don't have to be to. You don't have to. All right, here's the link. Tell me if you can access it or if you have a problem. Were you able to access it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much for responding. So you have um, 
10 minutes to answer and your timer starts now. But if you are able to answer it within the time, you can comment down here in our chat. Take your time, people. Before submitting your activity or your quiz, please double check your answers and make sure that the Gmail you inscribe is the active one because I will send your score later at your Gmail account. So comment down if you're finished, okay? So I have here Monica Matito already finished. I will wait for the others. Bernadette is also done. Miss Esther is also done answering. So I will wait for the others. I will wait for Mr. De Jesus, Miss Corpus, and Miss Junio. Miss Corpus are done. Mr. De Jesus is also done. Let's wait for Kesha.
Oh, I just saw here that my dear sister is Esther. Congratulations, Esther. You are top one in our activity a while ago. Keisha, are you with us? All right, this class will be about to end. To review, let's have this short activity that surely you will enjoy answering. So you, will, you have to read the sentences and then identify what part of argumentative essay they are. If they are an introduction part or body part or conclusion part. So we have here for number one, Please read and answer, Mr. De Jesus. Mr. James De Jesus. All right, Ms. Uh, Ms. Carpuz. According to NHTSC, between 78% and 100% of the cases of aggressive driving resulted in traffic crashes and 96% of the drivers cited for following too closely or tailgating caused crashes as a result of their aggressive driving. I think it should be in the body paragraph because it provides evidence, ma'am. All right, very good, Ms. Carpuz, that is correct. How about in number two? Will you please read and answer? Yes, Ms. Junio. Number two, as online learning becomes more common and more and more resources are converted to digital form, some people have suggested that public libraries should be shut down and in their place, Everyone should be given an iPad with an e-reader subscription. I think, ma'am, that it should be written in the uh, introductory paragraph because it provides background information. All right, nice, Miss Junio. So how about this one? Number three. Yes, Miss Kalila. Number three. It should be in, oh, sorry. Uh, continuing to offer the current level of benefits to students at least makes it possible for as many people to benefit from and enjoy college sports as possible. I think this part is in the conclusion because it is a short sentence that summarizes all the arguments. That is also correct. So next number, we have number four. Yes, Mr. De Jesus, you are here now. Uh, first of all, studies shows that only a few regions are capable of raising enough taxes on their own. The vast majority of provinces, which will be submerged into new federal states, lack the basic administrative capacity for generating revenue not to mention duplication in taxes and further stress on the nascent bureaucracy of peripheral regions under a federal uh, arrangement. Ma'am, I think it should be in the body paragraph because it states the reason why the, research, the readers rather should support uh, your thesis. Yes, that is correct, Mr. De Jesus. Very good. So last but not the least, we have number five. Who would like to answer? Yes, Mr. Guzman. Fast fashion is not ideal. However, the thrifted and sustainable clothing movement is actively trying to change that. It's heartwarming to know that there are brands out there with trendy clothing, affordable prices, and the environment in mind. Hopefully, many of us will take advantage of those. I think, ma'am, this is for conclusion. 
Very good, class. Very good, Ms. De Guzman. Thank you for those who answered. That is a fabulous activity. So for your assignment, you read this official statement of the Department of Education regarding the pilot implementation of limited face-to-face -face classes below. This is here. So write an argumentative essay about your position on get ba getting back into a face-to-face -face setup or will adapt to the new normal mode of learning. So find evidence from credible resources to support the writing. So write your essay on separate sheet of paper and refer to this rubric for your reference. And for your additional activity, Search for an article that, uh, or text or a claim on the internet and construct a counter argument with supporting details. Let me share. With supporting details, write it, write it also on a separate sheet of paper. Anyways, I will post all of this on our Google Classroom so you are able to access it anytime. So before we end, I would like to ask you, what do you think is the relevance of this type of essay? Or to your life as a student and as a member of society? Do you have some realizations about the lessons? Yes, Mr. Guzman? Yes, ma'am. So I think the most important um role of an argumentative essay is to inform the other youth about the counterpart of the um, point of view of, of ours, of, of a particular person. Um, it also um, state that we need to be analytical when it comes to reading a, an information, especially that we are very exposed in social media right um it tends us to read more and cite a legitimate source and the main point here is to make a change not to argue yell yell at something or to fight with someone that's it ma'am all right thank you so much for that realization Ms. Guzman. i'm so glad that you have it another answer who would like to share their realizations about the lesson? Yes, Ms. Corpus. Mm, yes, ma'am. I think the argumentative uh, essay is very uh, um, useful in, you know, um, persuading someone. If you want them to believe in you, of course, you 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 won't. You should not use it in you know, um, <laughs> um, lying or what, presenting <laughs> uh, um, things that you know for them to believe. But uh, what you're trying to do is to um, trick them. No, but it's helpful in academic. Yes, academic, and especially when you know you are um, doing your research thesis like that thank you miss corpus so if you feel comfortable with this and you feel you understood everything then that's good but if you need a little more practice i will post this meeting to our google classroom and also you could go back and watch the lesson again since it is a recorded meeting pay attention to any part that you need to review and when you are ready we can go on to the next lesson to our next meeting so are we clear with that Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. If you have um, any questions, clarifications, you can contact me via email or phone. So I have here in the presentation my con my um, email address and contact number. And also consultation hours between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. only. So thank you so much for um, participating. I hope you learn so much in our lesson so for now let's call it a day and thank you and god bless thank you mom, mom. God bless. Thanks, mom.
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone.